Yo, this is Tilay Riley. Make sure you go check out my interview on amarudontv.com. It is what it is. So Riley. Yes. How you doing, sir? How's everything? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, how was it? Actually, let's, let's just start off with the recent event, Trey Songs. How right. was that for you at the, um, was it Hammersmith? Hammersmith Apollo. Yeah. That was crazy, super crazy. Um, I'm still buzzing right now. And um, just like reading through like all my tweets, like even before we came, I was like retweeting and like, Talking to everyone that was there, that enjoyed the show, um, it was amazing, man. I was on the tour for about um, a week. Um, started in Glasgow, um, we did Liverpool, Manchester, um, London, and it was it was amazing. Great experience. Did, did you get to meet Trey as well? Um, I met him briefly, briefly, so that was quite cool. And then he was like, oh yeah, I heard you on tour, like, I heard you before your performance. So that was cool to like kind of get that kind of recognition from we, him. We were talking just before about your outfit, like, yeah. tell people about your outfit. The outfit was crazy, because um, I'm working with this designer, she had this idea um, of to like take the concept of like, you know builders, mm -hmm. they wear like those fluorescent lights or neon lights, mm -hmm. so we kind of took that and applied it to like a normal jumper and then made it like a stage outfit, so it lit up basically, it's, if you took a picture of me it's like, whew, and like when the stage lights hits, this is crazy, so it had lights everywhere, it just looked like something out of Tron. So if you saw the performance, you would have saw that. So. Okay, so now, let's get into the single. Right. With Scorcher. Good as gold. Good as gold. Yeah, man. I'm gonna flip it. People usually say, okay, what's the concept behind it? Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you, what was the process? Where were you when you made it? How did it all come together? Right. Um, actually wrote Good as Gold and Look For Me, Chipmunk, in the same week. And in the same studio, same like room, same producer, everything. And so um, Good As Gold was kind of like, look for me, part two, but with more of like a gritty kind of feeling. I wanted to like challenge rappers. So I, I wrote it as a rap, first of all, like my verses, and then just like added melody to it. So it's got like lyrics, like um, tell you how my plan goes, we can go to Nando's, make it extra hot, but I ain't trying to be your man though. So like, if, I, when I perform it, sometimes I rap it as well just to kind of like get that but um yeah the process was um real easy the song came real quick um I actually recorded it in the studio like with Harmony he was the guy that produced it and sent it over to Scorcher he was like he loves the song and then he put his verses on it and I was like Phew. it's a rap man and then we shot the video for it like two weeks ago it's going to be out soon so it's out in iTunes right now so you can get it and then the video is going to be um coming like in the next week or two so, so what's, what's, what's the concept for the video the concept for the video is real bright real summery you know loads of girls <laughs> running around just like a party do you know what i mean it's like a pool party vibe everyone's just having fun because that's exactly what we're doing in the song we're just having fun so we wanted the video to reflect that and obviously it's hot in london so we thought why not let's throw a pool party and yeah man so it's just real real bright and real summery real cool now for you, do you, do you personally set any targets or expectations for the tracks you put out? Um, I don't put out expectation because I think that just leaves room for disappointment sometimes or in a better sense um, being surprised in a positive light. Um, but like putting, when we put out Good As Gold we didn't expect it to do as well as it started doing which is good. Um, so we put it out saying okay we'll generate some buzz and let people get used to the song and then it started charting. Gold. I'd like to top top 40, top 20, do you know what I mean? That's what we're aiming for and anything like that I'll be happy with. And then I've got like um, my next single, Make Your Mind, coming after that, which is going to be crazy. I'm shooting a video for that in like mid-May, so that should be very like interesting. So watch out for that one as well. So what we got to be clear on is that you are an accomplished songwriter. Okay. Thank so, you very much. No, you are. So, <laughs> no, because... There's going to be people who may not be aware. Right. So let people know kind of um, placements you've had in terms of songwriting um, credits. The first ones that people might know or know of, but not necessarily know, I wrote them was like Oopsie Daisy for Chipmunk. That was like the first one. And I did like Beast as well and for Chipmunk. Um, Look For Me, of course, I featured on that one. And um, I've got a song on Tiny Tempers album. Um, Jesse J. Um, working with JLS, just did like a week with them. So working. the video was in Denmark. Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It was in Denmark, and that was that was crazy. You're the fifth know. member, right? I'm the fifth man, <laughs> you know, doing the whole. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, love. Shout out to JLS as well, man. And One Direction, Cher Lloyd, myself. 
you know what I mean? You can't beat myself. And I'm always like aiming high, so I always aim for like artists like Beyonce and the Ushers and stuff like that. So hopefully next time you ask me that question, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I did that. That song for like Usher and whoever, so. But in terms of the, the people like um, Sherlo, uh, One Direction, mm -hmm. do you, how, how do you solicit your tracks to them? Do you go into the studio with them or you just? Sometimes, like I'm in the studio of One Direction in like two weeks and um, hopefully I get to work in the studio with shit. I prefer working with artists because then you get what their label want and then you get what they want mm -hmm. and then they can get a bit of what you think mm -hmm. and then when it all comes together you see you either get something magical or you don't mm -hmm. and so I'm um, sorry I think it's cool when you um, work with them but sometimes I might just write a song like go to the studio and be like oh I'll have this idea put it down and then send it off but I love it and then it goes so it's a bit of both really you used to be a rapper right? I did can why? you tell from the, <laughs> the, hand, the movement. hand movements? <laughs> so yeah. why did you change it? Why did you go into singing? Um, I just thought that um, I was a better singer than I was a rapper. I was good as a rapper. Let me know. I always no. think, I always think, I always think <laughs> guys go to singing because of the girls. They get more attention. Oh, oh, but the thing is, the girls <laughs> like love rappers. I think girls love rappers just as much as they love singers. But you know it would have been those ones that you probably had like girls saying, oh, can you sing happy birthday on the phone? Yeah, See? you can't rap happy birthday. Can you? <laughs> there you go. Happy birthday. Then no, it won't work. Yeah. But um, yeah, I thought I definitely thought I was a better singer than I was a rapper. And so I started putting like hooks on my songs that I was rapping on, and then I'd listen to them and think, hmm, the hook's good. <laughs> the hook's really good. The lyrics are all right. Yeah. And so I kind of just started writing full songs from then, and it's evolved into writing songs of all genres from like pop to rock to indie, country, R&B, soul, everything and then before I knew it I, I had like a song on the radio that, and then I had a number one and then it started writing for this person and that person and then I got signed. And then the calls must be like really picking up once you get that first number one. Like, exactly, yeah. so just now but I think I've got a long way to go, uh, I'm only 20, mm -hmm. so just trying to channel as much positivity and creativity as, as I can and just see where it takes me really. And you're not trying to be just an R&B singer just because not you're black, all. you're trying to be Definitely, because I'm aware that as soon as people hear me, they think, oh, okay, yeah, one extra <laughs> or something, do you know what I mean, straight away. But it's, I think it's great that I'm getting support from like people at one extra, but then I can have a song on Radio 2 and Radio 1 as well. So um, what, what, what we were doing is like uh, putting out the songs and um, people are acting surprised and like people are surprised when they hear that I've got a country song, that I've got an indie song, that I've got a rock song, that I've got an R&B song. So um, yeah, I think people once people get the album they'll understand. Like I've got a song called Missing You which is a country song which hopefully people will get to hear which I think is, is an amazing song. And I've got a song called Gravity, it's like a big pop ballad. And just like Humanoid, you haven't really heard a song like Humanoid. Some people didn't get it, some people did, but I think that's the, when you when you get something new, it's like Marmite, you either like it or you don't, but you can't not say that it's this isn't fresh or something yeah. different. So I think, um, yeah, that's all I'm trying to do, is just really um, channel as much creativity and indifference as I can and just make great music like the people that inspire me. So hopefully I inspire others.